Hello friends, I am Dr. Lakshminder Singh. I am giving presentation on Article 12 of the Indian Constitution. This is basically the concept of state and uh, the learning outcome of this module uh, is that, that in this module we will try to understand the modern concept of state under Article 12 of the Indian Constitution. We will also try to understand that how this uh, state, the concept of state has been developed in the, in the various countries like United States and the United Kingdom. As we all know that uh, constitution of India is sovereign law of the land and uh, it carries the basic rule of law, basic nation, notions of the rule of law, limited government and it provides the, uh, the structure, procedures, parts, duties of the government institutions and sets out fundamental rights, directive principles and the duties of citizens. Now, the whole constitutional uh, scheme prohibits all, the, all of the three organs of the state and legislature, executive and the judiciary and from acting against the spirit of the constitution of India. Even the constitution of India, it prohibits the state from interfering with the uh, individual's fundamental rights. The state cannot act arbitrarily, irrationally, irrationally or unfairly. The state cannot impose unreasonable restrictions on an individual's fundamental freedoms. And uh, in the land of landmark judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court of India, uh, in Menka Gandhi versus Union of India, the Supreme Court said that in order to limit someone's right to life and personal liberty, the state has to adopt just, fair and reasonable procedure. So, the state is under an obligation to act fairly without ill will or malice in law or in fact. So, there is a concept of limited government that government cannot exceed their powers, they cannot overreach the, their powers. However, all such constitutional remedies, they are available against the state section only. And in other words, the fundamental rights can be enforced against the state only. An individual cannot enforce his fundamental right against a private individual. So, the limited inform, enforcement of fundamental rights involves serious implications and asks what would happen if private entities or non-state actors and which are uh, performing the, the public duties if they violate our fundamental rights. So, there is a need to understand this concept in the various countries also like in United States. The United States constitution it protects rights and liberties of the individuals against the governmental actions. But there is also one thirteenth amendment to the United States constitution which prohibits slavery and could be enforced not only against the governmental action, but also against the private actions. In India, we have a same provision, provision like of uh, abolition of untouchability. This is a right which can be enforced against the individual also, private individual, individual also. So, uh, except to the 13th amendment in the United States constitution, all other guarantees can be enforced only against the state action. State action is a conduct of any state or federal government. So, 13th amendment, the 14th amendment and the 15th amendments were enacted in order to protect freed Negroes from all forms of oppression by the states. Now, there is a, a famous case United States versus Krushank, it is a case of uh, 1876 uh, in which basically the US Supreme Court, they recognize the state action doctrine in dictum and stated that the 14th amendment, it prohibits a state action only and not that of the private citizen. So, it was a serious issue, issue. The court said that the provision says nothing about the rights of the one citizen against the another citizen. Later on, there was a case, civil rights cases 1883. The United States Supreme Court, they struck down the Civil Rights Act of 1875 and held that the 14th amendment, it prohibits a state action of a particular character only. The court said that the wrongful act of an individual is simply a private wrong. But this was a strict interpretation, so it was severely criticized and because of its uh, strict interpretation of state action doctrine, the racial discrimination remained the continuous and unending practice of the American society. However, the courts, they gradually expanded the definition of state action and brought many private actions within its ambit. During 1940s, the courts severely criticized the arguments of the civil rights cases. There was a case Smith versus Allwright 1944. In this case, a state law authorized the political parties to frame their own rules for the primary elections. Now, the political parties prohibited the non-white voters from participating in the primary elections. The court considered the exclusion of non-white voters as a state action and held that such action was in violation of 
15th amendment another case was the shelley versus kramer 1948 in this case the legality and the enforceability of the private agreements barring, barring the people of negroes or asian race from occupying the properly property in a uh, real estate they were challenged the court held that the enforcement of the racially discriminatory restrictive covenants was a state action and therefore prohibited another case was of burton versus wellington parking authority 1961 in which a restaurant which was physically and financially under the control of public author authority refused to serve food or drink to a person because he was negro now the court held that it was a state action and discriminatory in nature in the year of 1972 in the case of moose lodge versus irvis a racially restrictive private club refused to entertain the african american guest the court held that it was purely a private citizen action the court said that even if the authority had granted a liquor license to the private club it did not make the private club's discriminatory action a state action under the 14th amendment so it was developed in that manner in the united states now how it developed in the united kingdom it has a different story now in the year of 1998 human rights act was passed in the united kingdom this was passed to make the public authorities more accountable and to provide effective remedies in united kingdom courts for breaches of human rights now section 6 of the act it prohibits public authorities from acting in contravention of the fundamental rights and freedoms mentioned under the european convention on human rights Section seven enables the individuals to enforce the fund, uh, such fundamental rights and freedoms in the courts of the United Kingdom. Now, the purpose of the Human Rights Act of 1998 was passed uh, in those times when the role of the private and the voluntary sectors in the provision of public services had been increased. Therefore, it was enacted to cover those functions also which were performed on behalf of the state by private or voluntary sector. bodies acting under either statute or under contract section 6 identified two distinct categories of public authorities which would have a duty to comply with the convention rights that is pure public authorities such as government departments local authorities or the police and the functional or hybrid public authorities which performing the functions of public nature now the state cannot escape from its responsibility to protect once human rights by delegating its essential public functions to private bodies or individuals moreover the wider interpretation of public authority has also cast a positive duty on the state to protect people's fundamental rights by taking some active steps and this and this should be done without any discrimination in this in one of the judgment popular housing versus donoghue in 2001 a housing authority providing rented accommodation on behalf of a local authority was held a functional public authority the court also gave some guiding factors for determining functional public authority which are as follows one is statutory authority controlled by the state and proximity of the relationship between the private body and the delegating public authority in another case callin heather and ward versus leonard cheshire 2002 judgment In this case, the Court of Appeal held that state-funded patients in a private, privately operated care home could not use, could not sue the private care home under the Human Rights Act, because the provision of care was not a public authority function under Section 63 B of the Human Rights Act of 1998. However, in one of the cases, R versus Partnerships in Care Limited, 2002. the a private provider of mental health care was held to be a functional public authority within the meaning of section 63b of the human rights act now let's start with the concept of state under article 12 of the indian constitution now article 12 of the indian constitution it defines state to include the government and the parliament of india the government and the legislature of each of the states all local authorities and other authorities within the territory of india or under the control of the government of india now the most pro pro problematic expression under article 12 is other authorities as this expression has not 
been defined in the constitution. So, it is for the courts to interpret this term and it is clear that the wider this term is interpreted the wider the ambit of the fundamental rights would be. In the year of 1954 the case is University of Madras versus Shantabai. Now, in this case the Madras high court evolved the principle of adjusterm generis which meant only authorities that perform governmental or sovereign functions can be included under article 12. The court interpreted the definition of state in a very restricted sense. The court treated the definition as exhaustive one and confined to the authorities or those which are of like nature. In the year of 1967, there is a case Rajasthan Electricity Board versus Mohanlal. In this case, the Honorable Supreme Court of India held that the other authorities included those authorities which had been created by the constitution or under any statute and on whom powers had been conferred upon by law. And it is immaterial that some of the powers conferred on the authority may be for the purpose of carrying on commercial activities while deciding the status of authority under article 12 of the Indian constitution. Now, in the year of 1975, there is a case Sukhdev versus Bhagatram in which the court discussed the status of statutory corporations like ONGC, LIC, IFC. So, while deciding the scope and status of these corporations, the court held that all of these corporations were the state under article 12 of the Indian constitution, because these corporations were created by statutes had the statutory power of to make binding rules and regulations and were subject to pervasive government control. So, the concept was concept of state was developing in this era. In the, in the same judgment, the it is justice Matthews who gave a concurring ju judgment. Justice Matthew in his concurring judgment went further. He said that a state acts through the instrumentality or agency or of natural or juridical persons. It means that if an action has been done by a state's instrumentality or agency, then it would amount to state action. In order to understand, in order to find out whether an entity is a state's agency or instrumentality, he gave determining factors like whether the state has financial and administrative control over the management and policy of, of the agency whether the entity or instrumentality or agency is performing an essential public functions, whether the entity or agency is carrying out business for the benefit of public or not. Justice Matthews concurring opinion became a guiding factor for the future judges to determine whether an entity is a state's agency or instrumentality or not. In the year of 1979, R.D. Shetty versus International Airport Authority the court laid down five tests to be considered other authority, which were entire share capital is owned or managed by state, enjoys the monopoly status. If the authority uh, or is a department of government is transferred to corporation, functional character governmental in a sense, deep and pervasive state control, object of authority. In the year of 1981, the Supreme Court again uh, dealt with the same issue the, uh, in the case of Ajay Hasia versus Khalid Mujib. In this case, a regional engineering college was under the government's financial and the administrative control of the government. The court held that the college was an authority for the purpose of Article 12. Now, the court laid down the, the following test to determine whether a body is an instrumentality of the government or not. Like if the entire capital of the corporation is held by government, where the financial insistence of the state is so much as to meet almost entire expenditure of the corporation, whether the corporation enjoys monopoly status, which is state conferred or state protected, existence of deep and pervasive state control. If the functions of the corporation are of public importance, if a department of 
government is transferred to corporation. So, however, these tests are not conclusive, they are not exhaustive, these are inclusive in nature. In the year of 1987, in case of M C Mehta versus Sri Ram fertilizers, with regard to private entities, the Supreme Court widened the meaning of state action. The court stressed that the ambit of Article 12 should be enlarged in order to bring private companies under the strict scrutiny of fundamental rights. In the year of 1993, very crucial issue was discussed in the case of J P. Unni Krishna versus state of Andhra Pradesh that was of right to education. The court held that the private educational institutions they cannot be allowed to violate article 14 as they are performing a public function of imparting education. This kind of public this kind of judicial interpretation of article 12 is very essential in the impartation of free and compulsory education in India because the right to education is a fundamental rights and even we have enacted the right to free uh, right of free and a compulsory education act 2009. So, for that purpose we need the wider ambit of article 12 of the Indian constitution. Now, in the year of nine in the year of 2002 there was a case of Pradeep Kumar Biswas versus Indian Institute of Chemical Biology. Now, the supreme court said that the, the test formulated in Ajay Hasya are not a rigid set of principles. The court held that cumulative effect of the all the tests will be considered to find out whether the body is financially, functionally and administratively dominated by or under the control of government of in India or government of state. So, the concept was little bit more widened in the year of 2002. Now, in the year of 2005, in the case of Z Tally Films Limited versus Union of India, the Supreme Court excluded Board of Control for Cricket in India from the preview of Article 12. The court said that mere regulatory control, whether under statute or otherwise, did not make a body state. The court found that the board was not the creation of any statute. The government had no financial control over the board. Moreover, the state confers no monopoly status over board of cricket in the country. The court found that the government has no only regulatory control over the board and not administrative one. Therefore, the court held that board was not state under article 12. However, the relief against BCA is available in high courts under article 226, but it is very important to understand or to determine whether the BCCI should be made a state in future or not under article 12 of the Indian constitution. And the debate has been started nowadays that it should come within the preview of right of right to information act 2005. So, this is the requirement of the modern welfare state that BCCI should be made a state. In the year of 2007, Lieutenant Governor of Delhi versus V K Sodi, the issue of whether State Council of Education Research and Training is a state within the meaning of Article 12 of the Indian Constitution was raised. The Supreme Court found no governmental interference or control, either financially, functionally, or administratively, in the working of the council. In the year of 2006, the case was Assam Small Scale. Industrial Development Corporation versus J D Pharmaceuticals. A legislation of 1989 was enacted for promoting industries in the state of Assam, including small scale industries. The 1989 Act constituted a board for the purpose of monitoring supplies to various departments. The managing director of the corporation was a member of the board in terms of the humor uh, of the provisions of the 1989 act. The Supreme Court held that it was a statutory body and was a state within the meaning of article 12 of the Indian constitution. The contract by and between the parties being a statutory one, the corporation was required to act fairly and reasonably. 
However, the all the above said statutory bodies, corporations, government companies and or public sector undertakings are not state within the meaning of article 131 of the Indian constitution. Now, article 131 of the Indian constitution, it provides original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court subject to the provisions of this constitution, the Supreme Court shall to the exclusion of any other court have original jurisdiction in any dispute between the government of India, one or more states, between the government of India and any state, between two or more states. So, there are certain decisions which are saying that which uh, enlarged article uh, saying that enlarged article 12 is not applicable in case of article 131 of the Indian constitution. In the case of Tashi Delic Gaming Solutions Limited and another versus state of Karnataka, so case of 2006, the Supreme Court held that the enlarged definition of state under article 12 would not extend to article 131 of the Indian constitution. The court says that it is also not in dispute that even a statutory corporation is not a state within the meaning of the said provision. In the case of Srikanth versus Vasant Rao 2006 judgment again, the court held that the corporation or the other states instrumentalities are not state government for the purpose of section 9A read with section 7 of the representation of the people act 1951. In the case of in state of Assam versus Barak Upatke D U Karamchari 2009 judgment, the Supreme Court held that the fact that a corporate body or a cooperative society answers the definition of state does not make it the state government nor will the employees of such a body become holders of civil posts or employees of the state government. Now, in the year of 2011, Indian Medical Association versus Union of India the Supreme Court held that the rights of the non-minority education institutions to admit students of their choice, if exercised in full measure that would be detrimental to the true nature of education as can as an occupation damage the environment in which our students are taught the lessons of life and imparted knowledge and further also damage their ability to learn to deal with the diversity of India and gain access to knowledge of its problems, so that they can appreciate now how they can apply their formal knowledge in concrete social realities they will confront. There is a need to interpret state in case of imparting education. Imparting education is one of the very basic public function. And for this purpose, the, there is a need to enlarge the scope of state. Now, since education is, uh, is the most important function of public importance, every individual body or entity performing such public function should be considered a state action within the meaning of article 12 of the Indian constitution. Now, the liberal interpretation of state action is the only way to protect individuals fundamental right to education in India. The National Commission to review the working of the constitution 2002 had recommended that in article 12 of the Indian constitution, the following explanation should be added. The explanation was, this article the expression other authorities shall include any person in relation to such as it functions which are of public nature. Now, there is a need to uh, put some light on certain recent concerns. Nowadays, the in the era of uh, liberalization, globalization and uh, privatization, the state is outsourcing its public functions to the private authorities, private entities and private individuals. Now, once they have outsourced their functions, the government would say that now we are not responsible towards your fundamental rights. So, it is very dangerous in future, because in the coming era, we are dealing with the 
with the more private entities which which are coming into picture and they are dealing with our basic rights basic fundamental rights if we if go if we would go to enforce our fundamental rights then we would be totally helpless to enforce our fundamental rights against the private individuals so where the pub private entities or the private individuals if they are performing any public utility functions or imparting any public function in that case they should come within the purview of article 12 of the indian constitution and they should be considered as state for example where a private employer terminated the services of his employee on some unreasonable grounds where that employee would go definitely if there is a reason if one of the reason is that employee was homosexual that is totally unreasonable and whether he would be able to enforce his fundamental right against the private employer or not this is the very prime issue similarly the the government's function of surveillance it has again been outsourced to the private entities the private bodies private enterprises they are conducting surveillance for the for on their own and uh, maybe uh, uh, it may be used in future uh, for the government function only but while performing thus such surveillance things they violate our basic fundamental rights our fundamental rights like right to privacy is there very right to privacy is very important right to privacy is is a is a thing in which uh, we live our all private actions nobody can say that there is nothing to hide everybody has so many things to hide even if if somebody is raising their children if somebody is going to their work if they are law abiding citizens definitely still they have many things to hide and the notion that we have nothing to hide it's a very dangerous for other things like it would be a dead it would be very dangerous effect upon the on the protection of whistle blowers if somebody wants to wants to disclose some uh, important functions i mean important files or important information of the government in which government is violating our fundamental rights or any other uh, person is violating uh, the things or if if there is a, some political opponent or political dissident if he wants to uh, disclose uh, or want to wants to re reveal certain basic things in that case there is a need to protect that uh, whistle blower and if we say that we have nothing to hide how it will have a impact upon his right he would definitely whenever he would disclose such things or whenever he would be a political dissident or political opponent the government would try to uh, make a surveillance or they will try to hire these private bodies to have a surveillance over that person and will try to collect certain information which would distract the people's intention from the substantial issue so this is very important so there is a need to interpret the concept of state under article 12 of the indian constitution in a wider sense finally uh, we should conclude uh, this module in this module we have we discussed uh, the development of the concept of state how that the united states and the united kingdom they have uh, given nowadays a wider interpretation to the their state action doctrine and even in india uh, we have uh, discussed various case laws in which the honorable supreme court of india has endeavored and made a very strong efforts to in, in, to widen the scope of article 12 of the indian constitution and th it is very important uh, it is important in the in the modern uh, era where the government is outsourcing its public functions to the private entities private bodies private co corporations or the things like that so in such circumstances where they are performing the public functions and they and, and uh, in that performance our fundamental rights are at stake there is a need urgent need to interpret article 12 of the indian constitution that is state and we have discussed in the last key that how the 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 things like government surveillance parts or that have been again outsourced and now that these these is private entities and private bodies and the social networking sites they are collecting huge amount of information on us and uh, there is a chance ki that that information can be misused uh, in future and uh, 
for the protection of our right to privacy there is a need to interpret article 12 of the indian constitution so that we could enforce our basic fundamental rights against these bodies also the against the social networking sites or against the or against the other private individuals who are dealing with our fundamental rights or who are performing the public functions so it is very important and by this uh, i conclude this thing thanks